Hello everybody, it's Dio from Firm But Fair Gaming bringing you another video. Hello everybody, it's Dio from Firm But Fair Gaming here bringing you another Fury Warrior Guide for World of Warcraft Dragonflight 10.0.5 is here. So let's take a look at the changes that we have for Fury Warrior. The changes, we have a few here. Some of them are just more to do with giving some play diversity, uh, like the Onslaught here. So Onslaught, we increase the damage by 40% and now generates 30 rage. And then Tenderize causes enrage to last two seconds longer. So that was the talent below Onslaught, trying to add some different possible builds that are out there. Not necessarily making a new build the top, but giving the option there. They also have that the Storm of Steel's Ravager damage uh, is only reduced by 30%. It was 40. Uh, Frenzied Flurry increases auto attack damage with one-handed weapons uh, by 30%. It used to only be 5%, so that may be something to look into. Unbridled Ferocity causes Onslaught to trigger Recklessness in addition to Rampage. And then we have Storm of Swords Whirlwind damage increased by 80%, so it used to be 70, so that's over in like the Annihilator tree. And then, of course, now we also have Anger Management, decreases the cooldown of Ravager, try to get us to use the two charges that we get from the Storm of Steels. And then duration of Avatar and Recklessness caused by Berserker's Torment is now 8 seconds, what's 4, so that's the talent instead of Odin's Fury, where if we use one, we get the other at a lesser efficiency. Uh, so they just double the timing we get for that. But the big changes, in my opinion, is our increased damage. So we get more damage to Raging Blow, Execute, Rampage, uh, Annihilator damage, which will be handy for PvP. Same with Bloodthirst, Bloodbath. And so the reason that they have this is that despite a strong start to Season 1, Furies is basically behind where they want it to be. So they gave us some damage boost, which will be nice, uh, particularly for M+, that will help... The, Give, help us for sure and also pvp we are pretty um like we have pretty bursty have lots of damage but outside our cooldown windows we seem to really fall off in comparison to some of the other classes so this will definitely help us for sure now before we get into the rest of this guide where we look at the talents rotation all that fun stuff just going to do a little promotion here. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel, like, share, all that fun stuff. We have tons of guides here for several different games, World of Warcraft, Diablo 3, Star Wars, that sort of thing. Check it out. Be sure to follow us so we can keep bringing you guys more videos like this. Last thing I want to say is don't forget to come check me out on Twitch. You can find it in the description below in this video. So now for the actual exciting part, instead of my, the promotion of the channel, let's take a look at the talent build. All right, here we go with the talent tree. And on the right here, we just have a video of an 18 COS to give us something to watch. So you just don't have to listen to me ramble. So uh, the build is very similar to the 10.0 build that we had. Uh, this build does utilize having four piece. I know our four piece is nothing fantastic, but it is utilizing that. So on the so basically on the warrior tree, what we have here is we have berserker stance, and as well into defensive stance. I really like having impending victory. This is an optional one. You don't need to spec into this, but this does give us tons of survivability and helps us help the healer out and during key times where there's a large output of damage. We also go into War Machine, uh, so our auto attacks generate 20% more rage, and then Killing Enemy instantly generates 5 rage, increases our movement speed. Also goes into Rallying Cry, again this is a nice party uh, defensive, so you know it gives everybody a boost of health. Really useful in some internal cookies on some of the bosses. Like I'm thinking, for instance, the first boss in the Azure Vault during second or third stomp. If you encounter that, depending on how the group is, you throw this out and it really makes a difference. Gives us that little extra boost to make sure people don't die. We're then into fast footwork for some move speed. Spell reflect because it is so useful. The damage mitigation plus also reflecting spells that are targeting us. Then we have leeching strikes to give us 5% leech. And we go down into Frothing Berserker, so Rampage has a 20% chance to immediately refund, 20 of our Rage. Heroic Leap, or uh, just love flying through the air, some movement and mobility there. Furious Blows, so our attacks, uh, auto attack speed is increased by 
And we go down into pain and games. So when we take damage, any damage, we heal for 4.5% of our max health. Uh, this can only occur once every 10 seconds. Stormbolt, I love Stormbolts. Helps with an interrupt when our pummel is down. Uh, there are some instances where I think rotating this out and picking up Intimidating Shout is useful. Academy, for instance, when we have a lot of go those guys doing those whirlwinds and we can't quite stand in there, swapping that out might be worth the minute and a half cooldown uh, to just interrupt that to increase our DPS, but that's kind of situational. Uh, now, one difference from what the build used to have is now we are putting two points into Overwhelming Rage, so our max rage is increased by 30. This just helps us get a little bit more damage output. I noticed with more with our eye level and our four piece that this became more damage out than before when we did not take it. Uh, then we're of course using sidearms for so auto attacks of a 20% chance to hurl weapons at our targets and three other enemies in front of us dealing a bit of additional damage. And we get down into reinforced plates, so more armor. Bounding Strike, reduce the cooldown, Stride, sorry, reduce the cooldown of Heroic Leap and give us some move speed. We go into Barbaric Training, so Slam and Whirlwind deal 20% increased damage and 10% crit. Then we have Honed Reflexes, cooldown of Raging Blow and Pummel reduced by one second. Double time, we get two charges. And then we also pick up Seismic Reverberation, so if Whirlwind hits three or more enemies, it hits them one additional time for 30%. Uh, so we did get rid of bitter immunity i believe that's what i recommended last time because it was another um, basically a defensive that restores health so that is also an option like if you prefer having bitter immunity over uh, impending victory you can do that as well but i prefer the impending victory personally uh, then we move down so we got armor to the teeth gain strength equal to 10 percent of our armor wild strikes i only have one point in here uh, that that is because I want to have seismic reverberation. Uh, you can technically even sub completely out of this if you want to pick up bitter immunity or even an intervene if you find that wise. It's kind of situational, but anyways, our this, what it is that here we get our haste increased by one percent, and your auto attack strike increase. Uh, increases your auto attack speed by ten percent for ten seconds. Rank two is two percent, and it's twenty percent. Then we also have dual wield specialization, increases our damage while dual wielding by 5%. Cruel strikes, uh, we got two or two in here for critical strike chance increased by 2%, increased crit damage of execute increased by 10%. And then I'll just go down here. So then of course we have avatar, transform into Colossus, dealing more big damage and removing roots. And then we have of course Odin's Fury, or sorry, Titan's Torment, uh, which procs. Well, activating Avatar casts Odin Fury, and activating Odin Fury casts Avatar at reduced effectiveness. Uh, this was the one Berserker's Torment that they updated, where they doubled the duration from 4 to 8 seconds, but still we're not taking it. Uh, Titan's Torment is where to go. Then, of course, we go into Spirit Bastion, so I'll throw the Spear at our target location, trapping enemies inside, dealing a little bit of damage. But while we're standing on our Spear, we um, one, the durations increase, and two, we get to deal more damage while we're in it with our 25% critical damage increase. Moving over to our Fury Tree. So this is going to look pretty familiar, I imagine. So of course we stole with Bloodthirst into Raging Blow and we have Improved Enrage. So Enrage increases our haste, increases our move speed. Enrage Regeneration, nice little healing defensive there. And then we have improved execute that it no longer costs rage and now generates 20 rage. Then we go down into war paint, so we take 10% reduced damage while we are enraged. Then sudden death, our attacks have a chance to reset the cooldown of execute, make it usable on any target. So this is basically our force piece takes this and then puts it on steroids, so it procs more use more often. Then we have improved raging blow, so we have two charges and it has a chance to instantly reset its own cooldown. Then we have Rampage, so we unleash a series of brutal strikes, dealing a bunch of damage. Cruelty, while in Rage, Raging Blow deals 15% uh, increased damage, and Annihilator deals 10%. Now, we don't have Annihilator in this build, so that's all right. Then we have Frenzy, so Rampage increases our haste by 2% for 12 seconds, stacking up to four times. Hack and Slash, each Rampage strike has a 25% chance to refund a charge of Raging Blow, which is huge, so we can do our Raging Blow uh, spam. Then we have slaughtering strikes. Raging blow causes 
every strike of your next rampage to deal an additional 20% damage stacking up to five times. So this is where all the charges of Rage and Blow and the refunds come in handy. Basically with our haste and rotation, we get three to four uh, Raging Blows off and then we rampage. So our rampages are dealing between 60 to 80% more damage. Then we get over here where our Ash and Juggernaut execute increases the critical strike chance of execute by 10% for 15 seconds, stacks five times. Whirl improve Whirlwind, so our next four single target attacks strike up to four additional targets. Um, plus, uh, we get some Rage Regeneration. So this before, without this, our Whirlwind would only affect two. Then we have Wrath and Fury. Raging Blow deals 15% increased damage. And while Rage, Raging Blow has a 30% ch chance to instantly reset its own cooldown. So again, helping us with our Raging Blow spam. Then we, of course, pick up Recklessness, so we turn into a monster. Uh, increasing our rage regeneration and giving us increased crit for 12 seconds. Then we have Massacre. Execure, execute is now usable on all targets and its cooldown is reduced by one and a half seconds. So that pro plus our four piece, it was, we can get it to proc. We can execute spam. Um, more useful in single target situations, I think, than when we are fighting an AOE pack, I think it's still more useful to get a Raging Blow over top of Execute and then um, getting a Empowered Rampage out from my personal experience. So then we have Meat Cleaver, so Whirlwind deals 25% more damage and now Flexor for single target melee attacks instead of two. So I think up here I said that it was four instead of two, but that is just showing it because we have Meat Cleaver. So this is what really helps us out where we can just really Raging Blow spam and get away from, you know, Raging Blow, Rampage, Whirlwind, Raging Blow, Rampage, Whirlwind, that sort of thing. Now we get a lot more uh, Raging Blows out, so this is huge and why our DPS is so good. Then we have Raging Armaments, so we get an, an extra charge of Raging Blows. So this gives us our final one to give us our max there. Then we go down here, Swift Strikes increase haste by 2%, and Raging Blow generates an additional 2 Rage, and Annihilator generates an additional two rage but we don't have annihilator so we don't have to worry about that part and we have critical thinking critical strike chance increased by two percent raging blow and annihilator damaging crits deal 10 percent increased damage now our big damage abilities here for the build so here's odin's fury unleash our power dealing physical damage and putting a dot on all targets within 12 yards so this is what is cast so odin's fury here is what is cast when we use avatar as well as when we cast this then it will cast avatar so basically we are going to cast one and then the bleed lasts for four seconds and after four seconds we'll cast the other so i cast avatar at the same time as i do recklessness in my spear and then when that falls off while still standing in my spear i will use odin's fury to put a new dot on and deal all the damage so then underneath Odin's Fury, we got Titanic Rage, so it grants us 10% increased damage and grants us four Whirlwind Spacks. So I'll utilize that off the cooldown window to, instead of casting Whirlwind, throw that out and get the four stacks back right away. Then over here, we have Reckless Abandon, where Recklessness grants 50 Rage, and our Rampage greatly empowers our Raging Blow, and um, our next two Bloodthirst are Raging Blows, so that's handy there. And then on Bridal Ferocity, Ferocity, Rampage, and Onslaught have a 20% chance to grant 4 seconds of Recklessness. So Recklessness is up a ton. And of course over here we have Ravager, Ravager geez, can't talk, where we throw a whirling weapon at a location, chases the nearby enemies, inflicting a bunch of physical damage over 10 seconds, and it deals reduced damage beyond 8 targets. And then we go into hurricane so while it's active every 0.8 seconds we get move speed and 5% strength stacking up to six times and it lasts six seconds so storm of steel was where it we got another buff where instead of being reduced by 40% it's only reduced by 30 tested this out and storm of steel or sorry hurricane still was the better damage um, output as well even though we got the two chargers the increased strength stacking helped us deal more damage than the two charges of Ravager.
All right, now let's talk about the rotation. So for an AOE rotation on open, we want to charge in Ravager at our location, and then we are going to pop Restlessness and Avatar and Spear all at once. Our Spear is going to drop on us or where we, we would like it to be, but we want to be standing in it, so keep that in mind. Then we're going to Raging Blow three times, Rampage, pop Odin's Fury, it's still well in our Spear, and once our the three Raging Blows and Rampage is going to make sure that the initial bleed applied by our Avatar is off. Then we're going to Odin's Fury again, which will give us four Whirlwind stacks, because we're going to get a four Whirlwind stacks when we pop Avatar, which casts Odin's Fury, which procs Whirlwind. So we have that buff up. And then, of course, we do our three Raging Blows and Rampage and Odin's Fury. We're going to get the Whirlwind buff again, and then we're going to go in through three Raging Blows. And then our sustained priority rotation will be Whirlwind if the buff is absent. And then we're going to prioritize Raging Blow, then execute Rampage. And then if we are not enraged, then we're going to try to use Bloodthirst to get enraged if we don't have um, if we don't have the rage to cast Rampage. And then if Raging Blow is down, Bloodthirst is on cooldown, and we can't cast Rampage or Execute, then we will use Whirlwind as filler. So that is our rotation. Now let's take a look at what it is, looks like in action. So here we go. So I have a puzzle box. So I'm just going to pre-ramp that and then charge in. Got an execute proc. Still the spear is off. I get another Odin's out. I'm getting some execute proc, so I'm using that. The buff is off, so then I'm going to just fall into our Raging Blow Rampage priority se sequence. My other trinket was up because, yes, I am lucky enough. I have both a whetstone and a puzzle box, and so we're just plastic along here. So I didn't even pay attention to what my open was because this is, I think I might be clipping four targets at times here, but we were at 144 when I just looked down, and we'll just go through this for, I guess, until my cooldowns reset here. So we got another six seconds, and then Odin Fury is going to come up. So I have the three buffs, so I'm actually going to just use all three before popping Odin's Fury because we get to be enraged there as well as the four whirlwinds. So we're just going to do that. And yeah, so this is basically it. Now we're just prioritizing Raging Blows and our Rampages. And then of course we have Execute procs that are coming in due to our four piece. So we're throwing those in as well. And that is basically another 16 seconds. I'm actually curious what I can maintain here. I haven't done this for a little while. I think I'm clipping this fourth one back here, which is helping a little bit. All right, that's good enough. So we're at 88 there. Uh, I should wonder where we even peaked. I'll have to take a look at that <laughs> next time. But anyways, that is basically the rotation. So this is three, maybe three and a half, because I do think I was clipping the PvP dummy. But when we are in Mythic Plus and we see the big pulls where they do a double pull or triple, I've seen myself jump up to over 300k uh, on open. The problem that I am finding, though, and I'll throw this out right now, is our spear still generates a crap load of aggro. So what I typically do when the if a tank is doing a double pull and pulling it together, I will just charge in and only... Um, like use a whirlwind so I won't throw the ravager at the same time so I will just charge in and get a like a single rotation down here so get our whirlwind stacks three raging blows and then once I go through those four hits hopefully hopefully the tank has enough aggro that when we throw our ravager down and our spear and all that crap that we won't pull because pulling equals death so a number of times if I do jump in too preemptively and throw down everything. We'll have instant aggro. So it looks a lot like this, for example, charging in and then immediately jumping away because we're going to die as a result. So just wanted to throw that out as a warning. If you find that the tank is pulling them together, wait on bosses. We should be able to just drop it right away. But just keep in mind that Spear does generate a crap load of aggro. So we may have to de-up right away or step back, which would ruin our cooldowns.
All right, for our single target rotation, our opener is the exact same, Charge, Ravager. I'm going into Recklessness, Avatar, and Spear, Standing Spear, Raging Blow times three, Rampage, Odin's Fury, and then Raging Blow times three. And then our sustain rotation will be Raging Blow, Execute, Rampage, and then if we are not enraged, then we want to use Bloodthirst in order to get enraged, and then if everything is on CD, and or we don't have enough... Uh, Rage for Rampage, and we're going to use Whirlwind as a filler. So it looks exactly the same, so just going to show it in action. So there we go, we are going to town here. The main thing that is just to keep in mind that we want to get that uh, Odin's Fury cast off while our spear is still active, which really isn't that much of a problem. We can get four hits off. Um, and then get the Odin's Fury while still in the spear. The, the spear lasts like six seconds. So, but that's the main thing is that we want to get that off. So I just peeked down. Uh, our cooldowns were over and off, and we were at the 96k. And then basically all we're doing now is just raging blow into rampage. And then if we get an execute proc while raging blow is down, then we're going to do that. And then we have to use Bloodthirst as fillers. Bloodthirst is a filler over top of um, Whirlwind. Whirlwind is only if everything is down. It seems we don't need to worry about our Whirlwind buff because this is single target. It's just a lot of Raging Blows followed by Rampages and hoping for refunds to get more Raging Blows and Rampages. And that's basically it. We got left about another... 15 seconds before the CDs reset. I just messed up there by looking elsewhere. We're at 55. And that basically, uh, we'll just call it there. So we're about 54. Um, I am about 406 eye level just to show what gear I'm rocking for those that are interested. So I do a four piece. I'm 406 and a half. I'll just round down a little bit. Uh, I have 418 Lariat. I have a 418 Crafted Two Hander. And then I do have 411 Puzzle Box and Whetstone. And I am almost 2400. I'm just three away from 2400. So once I hit 2400, I'll be upgrading these to max. That gives you an idea of what I was working with on this. If you use the WoW sim, when I do a uh, Dungeon Slice sim, I sim at 80k. And when I do a Patchwork sim, I sim around, I think it was 45. But that might have been pre buffs to Raging, like pre 10.5. Oh, 05. But anyways, so that's the rotation on our single target. For stat priority, because I know we get that question a lot, I am rolling into mostly mastery. So I got 3600 in mastery, and then I have 2500 in haste, and then I have 2600 in crit. I would actually like to get a little bit more haste, but I'm kind of limited based on the gear that I've got. And then I have about 2000 in verse. Uh, verse is on a lot of our set pieces so that is just unfortunate ideally i would have less verse more haste so i think i'm going to try to aim to have well you always want as much mastery as possible but i would like to get closer to 3k haste and then lower verse and then put the, a little bit more into crit to kind of balance it out because uh, we do run into where haste capping may have some diminishing returns and then we want to switch into crit of course verse is our worst and so that is what I do for my stat priorities. So that brings us to the end of the video. If you have any questions or comments, please let me know below. I will do my best to answer them. As always, and as I mentioned earlier, we appreciate likes, shares, and subscribe. So please click those buttons. And of course, you can come find me on Twitch. I stream pretty much daily. And I would love to see you guys come out and chat with people, do some keys. It would be fun to do. So anyways, hope you enjoyed the video, and as always, yeah, let me know if you have any questions, and we'll be happy to discuss the build with you guys. Have a good one, and hope you're enjoying WoW Dragonflight.